Good evening, folks. Uh, we just popped up to the farm to do our evening chores, and I thought I would take the opportunity to give you the full insight on what on earth those giant chassis are actually for, because a lot of people have been asking, and we've mentioned it in previous videos and on Instagram, but we probably didn't go into enough of the details. So here it is, this is the big plan. So we also have another video, which is gonna be a general overview of our plans for the farm, which includes living on the farm and converting the barn, this one up here, uh, along with what we're gonna do with the restoration of the older buildings and all of that sort of stuff. A lot of it is st still to be decided, but really until we've put everything through planning and all the other parts of that, the cogs of that wheel, uh, until all that's ironed out, we can't live at the farm. Now, as soon as we do get planning permission to convert the barn, then we are allowed to live on site. Now, we could have put in planning to live in a caravan or a cabin or a mobile home under other reasons. We could say it's for work or for security or just put in a general planning application for it. It's very, very hard to do that in open countryside, which is what this is called, even though we're not a million miles away from civilization. In reality, we probably would have been hard pushed to get that. You've got to justify it as far as the need for, you know, uh, being able to, having to live on site. And it's not a case of just having a couple of sheep anymore. You hear people, you know, getting away with that in the past. It's a lot harder to do because in planners' eyes, it's, you know, a new dwelling in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. However, rather than go into putting the application in just for the cabin so we can move here, we've gone ahead and started to put together the application for the actual barn conversion, which in turn will allow us to live here. Now, what are the chassis for? Well, most people, self-builders, people in barn conversions, that sort of thing, or even people just having a, a heavy duty renovation might get a static caravan, site it in the garden, live in that uh, or or site it on the plot again if it was already a garden if it's a dwelling i.e residential then you can stick a static caravan in your garden and that's fine you don't need planning permission uh, again if there was a house here we would be able to do that because everything here is agricultural we don't have that luxury hence why we would need planning but we are allowed the temporary dwelling whilst we do the barn conversion. So rewinding a little bit, what is a caravan? What are you allowed? Now they call it a caravan, which is a bit nuts because the limit is quite big. You can go up to, don't quote me on this, but I think it's something like 65 feet long and 22 feet wide, which is a big building. That's, you know, bigger than a normal bungalow and you would be allowed that without planning if it was a residential garden or if you were just using it as a temporary dwelling whilst you're doing a building. So with that in mind, we decided, well, we've got to wait for planning. We're not going to be able to get a static caravan up the access lanes here. Static caravan, you know, quite often 12, 14 feet wide, 10 feet is, is pushing it as it is. So the next option is to get a twin unit. A twin unit is essentially a cabin or a lodge that's made up of two halves, you know, a park home sort of thing people retire to or you go on holiday at the beach and they have them in holiday parks. It's made up of two halves and then they're joined. So the Caravan Act sort of um, legislation allows you to make up your building of up to two parts. So it can either be a single unit or a twin unit and the most important part of it is it has to be transportable by uh, by another vehicle. That doesn't mean it has to be on a chassis with wheels. We've taken that option because we thought moving it around here would be easier. And also we might wanna build it in one place and then wheel it out when we finish building it. Uh, so you could go ahead and just build it on a steel ring beam or even a timber base but you would have to be able to crane that onto the transport that would you know it has to be able to be lifted and when you're dealing with a structure as big as the one we're doing 
that would take a bit of engineering in itself and it probably would cost as much and you'd have to have fabricate it on site by doing it the way we've done it we were able to get them fabricated off site eventually delivered as you saw and then they're there they're ready to build on so our chassis are 16 meters long which in old money is 50 feet and three meters wide they tend to all be done in feet but just for my own sanity i got it spec'd up in metric so ours is 16 by 6 meters total which you know you're not far off 100 square meters which is big enough for us to have four bedrooms and an office which we just wouldn't get if we were going to use a static caravan other people have said you could get two static caravans join them but you would then most static caravans are 12 feet or wider you'd then be over um other people were talking about maybe using lorry chassis and things like that again they wouldn't be as long as this uh, in reality i don't think and they'd be too high and too beefy and just they would probably weigh a lot more to move around so we have put a bit of thought into it and spending the i think it came to nine thousand pounds or so so four and a half thousand a piece to get that base to get it all right hopefully was the right decision all right let's get back up in the sunshine dogs going mad and once we built it we will site it and it will have you know water or electric a soak away septic system and it'll be essentially a fully functioning house we've given ourselves well we had a few options we've given ourselves three years to build the finished house here and that's a realistic you know we could say 18 months fine if it was all raring to go everything was there the budget was there the materials were all teed up then 18 months fine but you know everything always goes wrong in self builds and we don't really want to be like crazy crazy in a hurry getting stressed all the time so by doing saying three years we can manage that we can we can live in relative luxury uh for three years in this cabin that we're building spec to how we want it rather than squatting in a caravan and all five of us and the dog and cats and house rabbits all crammed in a little caravan what have you done cut yourself on what oh i didn't cut it i cut it on the bell that bell is horrible oh you need to take the bell off so with that in mind we were either going to be going the route we're going which is the cabin or renting somewhere locally for three years now bearing in mind there's literally zero rental properties within 10 miles of here uh goodness knows we tried even for the you know the current months that we're in now it was going to cost you know probably 35 grand let's say which is about the budget we set ourselves to build the whole cabin house so where we're calling it a cabin it could be a lodge you call it what you want it's basically a bungalow on wheels and that's a tight budget but i think we can do it we've already used nine thousand on the chassis unfortunately we've lost eight grand of it or eight and a half with the first order of chassis which we'll try and claw back somehow but in reality that we've started ordering materials we've got all the floor joists and things like that we should be aiming for like 30 35 grand to build the whole thing after we're done we could repurpose it like other people have asked you know we could do it in airbnb i think they're too big i think if we could split them into two units or we could use it as, i think there's nowhere on the farm we could position that nicely they're a bit bigger than your average shepherd's hut so what we would probably do is sell it when we're done or even keep one half and sell the other or something like that i don't think we've got a a long-term plan for it we need to come down and finish our bridge build there's the daddy goose down there mama goose is over there on eggs on the island come on we've got pigs to feed we crept past the pigs to come down here to walk the dog because uh, when they see you they know it's dinner time and they get a bit squealy so that's the plan the two chassis we can do bits ahead of time but as soon as we've got planning then we can site it and live on site in it uh, so we haven't maxed out we could have gone a bit longer do you want me to give you a push what's the molehills uh 65 feet is the longest you can go that would have been an absolute nightmare getting up the lane and we could have gone wider but again that wouldn't have fit up the lane so we just about hit the sweet spot 
but even 50 meters, 16 meters, uh, sorry, 50 feet, 16 meters is pretty long. And with four, you know, it's a quad axle. It does not turn on the spot at all. It's really quite a, a beast to get around. We're gonna have to knock a couple of old concrete walls down in the yard to get it out into the field around to where we're potentially gonna slice it in the end. So does all this info mean anything to you? Well, probably not, but it's an interesting thing. Everyone tends in the UK tends to know about permitted development, which is what allows you to build a garage or a shed or a workshop or something in your garden. But the Caravan Act, the mobile home situation is an interesting one because with within that criteria, you can put this structure in your garden and it can be habitable so you can sleep in it live in it a family member as long as it's a direct family member there's some specifics on that and uh, it can be a, quite a lot bigger the other thing is height it doesn't have to be really squat like most outbuildings we can go i think it's three meters or thereabouts ceiling height but it's the internal ceiling height which is the restriction so we can still have a sensible pitched roof on top of it you don't have to go for your normal mono pitched garden office to keep it under the the max you know whether that's near the boundary or a couple of meters away those limits are not quite the same so i don't know i mean this is not a a way of suggesting people start you know putting mobile homes in their gardens but essentially it can look exactly like an outbuilding you don't really see the chassis and you don't have to build it on a chassis but as long as it meets those criteria you could end up with a much more sizable building now i don't know i haven't read into it in too much detail but what the restrictions for use are could you use that as your, your garden office and extra living space for the house probably so maybe it is an option for people who want a little bit more than the normal restriction uh, that you get with the outbuildings so uh, remember all of that falls within planning and building regulations i think it's that 30 square meters is more to do with building regulations than planning permission but anyway we're going off track now you know what the plan is we've got probably two months to build the cabin and it will entail a timber frame that's going to be built on the chassis it's going to be pretty much conventional joists that are going to sit on the chassis insulation between 22 mil chipboard floor on that we're going to frame in cls the other nice thing the cabin allows us to do is experiment with a few different things products heating uh, the general build schedule and how we work together and how we work with supplies and things like that it's not going to be as extravagant or as big as the main house but it will give us a chance to try a few things. So we're looking at using all electric heating. Shock horror. Yes, it'll be expensive, but you know, most heating is expensive nowadays, which is why we're maxing out on insulation. Insulation is the key. And uh, we're gonna have a wood burner in there anyway. We're not short of wood. Um, infrared heating in the ceilings, in the living area, and then some simple electric radiators in the bedrooms. Uh, we'll probably have to have a gas combi for hot water um, and remember the budget is the budget so we're not gonna start including renewables and things like that in just the cabin build but the spec of the insulation and the build should reduce the uh, the heat load anyway the roof we ordered from a local manufacturer uh, the trusses they showed up three days later unbelievable which was pretty awesome so they're mono trusses Remember, it's, the whole building is built in two halves. So when it's paired together, it will create a standard pitched roof. Uh, so monotrusses on each side, so they should be nice and easy. Worked out cheaper and sim more simple than doing a cut roof. And then we've got some huge glue lamb beams to span the six meter by six meter living area, which is a kitchen diner lounge area. And they will, again, be a glue lamb on each half of the chassis and everything we bolted together. One of the other criteria is that the last kind of part of the structure procedure is to bolt the two together. 
you can't join them and then start putting the roof on. It has to be two units which are self-supported and structurally sound in themselves because of course the idea is each one of them needs to be bunged on the back of a big haulage company's lorry and transported up the M5. So it needs to be thought out. In reality, a lot of people just build these in the garden. They never ever get moved, but you've got to follow the rules and that's how it needs to be. So we're building them in two halves, completely independent of each other, and then they'll be bolted together at the end. Well, there we go, that should fill you in on the plan. It's a medium term solution. We want it to be good enough that we're not going to be rushing a build and moaning and struggling uh, in a damp caravan. But equally, it needs to be done on a, on a relatively tight budget um, for the size of building at least. So that's going to be probably the first part of the build that you'll see on the farm. And then as and when planning progresses and we make decisions there, then we'll start on the main building. Any questions, stick them down in the comments and we'll uh, see what we can answer. And if we can't answer it, then you'll have to do some digging and find out for yourself. I'll see if I can leave a, ready? See if I can find the uh, link to the actual ins and outs of it, the legislation and put that down there. You follow that link. That's a I'll leave you with a few clips of us feeding pigs and chickens and we'll call it a day. Hope everyone has a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. I'll see you next time.